Druid has abandoned me. <laughs> Druid has abandoned you. <laughs> I think like mage now. Been paladin. Okay. I think it's the other way around. I think you've abandoned <laughs> Druid. Oh, no. Still have the wall dress for backup. Space is saying you can kill my first ramp. Still have another one. Yeah. So, uh, Rogue. Uh, I still think that Druid is favored against Rogue, but Rogue can uh, does have a lot of tools that can uh, combat against Druid. Since Druid sends play, usually like one threat a turn. Snap, or sorry, Sap can be a big tempo tool. Yeah, this is another tempo matchup. I guess we've been saying this a lot, but uh, Rogue here generally loses the late game to Druid because of things like combo, and Druid has uh, Ancient Lore, but the way Rogue wins usually this matchup is a really good tempo play. So something like a back side by side, something like maybe a Azure Drake prep eviscerate, yeah. where they can kind of like stick a minion and gain a beat on Druid and then kind of uh, snowball that minion. Because a lot of times Druid doesn't have that many spells and generally prefers to just drop more minions. And against Rogue, that kind of plan falls apart sometimes where every minion you drop just dies some more Rogue spells and they just keep pushing in that damage from their minions that slowly build up, so but you not can't... the kind of cards you want to see in Rogue right now, since yeah. there's no minions. Yeah, I was going to say, you can find situations where you just never find creatures. Yeah, well, you can also Cold Light Oracle. Cold Light Oracle is actually not a very good card against Druid. One of the biggest reasons why is uh, Innervate, since, you know, when you're playing Cold Light Oracle as a tempo card, one of your goals is to combo with prep so you can have a very fast paced game and you win through tempo you know your opponent just doesn't have the time to play every card druid has a card that's very similar to prep and inner rate so they can also you know when you start call out or calling against a druid they can also up the pace of their own game and uh just you know start keeping up with you and throwing down a lot of their own things as well so well they are going to have to use both deadly poisons yeah. And their Cold Light Oracle body, just to trade in that Druidic Claw. And Probably one of the worst things that could have happened to Purdue this turn. Usually you have a... Usually when you Cold Light Oracle, you draw into a lot of spells, you know, you're not expecting to have to trade off your minion. Yeah. But, you know, here they just didn't have the right cards, so still have to trade off the Cold Light. And now Wooster has a couple options. I think Power to Treasure Hero Power seems like the best one. You don't want to overextend too much into something like a Blade Flurry. So, intervening out the shade seems um, not that great. Yeah, there's a lot of combo pieces in Wooster's hand, so Innervate is pretty important to save for combo or double combo. Prep, can't really prep out anything. To do wow, Dr. This turn. Boom. Dr. Boom on turn seven. Dr. Boom is one of the strongest cards against Rogue. Yeah. Uh, the best thing they can do against it is usually have a creature on the board and like Fan and Knives the backstab. Like Azure Drake, Fan and Knives backstab yeah. um, clears it off. But that's a lot of resources to be used. And maybe, maybe something can, like a Blade Flurry. Maybe something like a Blade Flurry with a, with a backstab also. But you need multiple sources of damage in order to deal with it. And the boom bots still usually do a lot of damage to you. <laughs> Look at this play, it's really cool. This is gonna be a blade for, for seven. <laughs> it's still Dr. Boom. Actually, it looks like they're gonna, they don't even have to if they want. They can uh, backstab Banana Knives. Backstab Banana Knives. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> That's yeah. one crazy, one crazy spell power combo. Yes, it is. That's about the cleanest way that you're ever going to find to deal with Dr. Boom, but the Boombots can still do some damage, and that's actually not too bad, keeping that Azure Drake alive. Not too much damage going towards the face. Purdue has to be happy about that exchange. Yeah, it's definitely unexpected. Normally when you're playing a Druid there, you know your board is Dr. Boom, two Boombots, and a 3-2. Your opponent had an empty board. Look at how big of a swing that was. The yeah. Rogue did not even use Blade Flurry. That was just purely from spell power and uh, backstab Vanna Knives. Pretty crazy event there. I mean, if Wooster knew that could happen, they could have gone for something like uh, Innervate Combo and gotten Purdue down to something like four life and finish the game with the next turn, second Force of Nature. But they had to expect that the Dr. Boom would have gone better. <laughs> they might. Okay, they decided to trade. I was thinking they could just 
No, they wouldn't be able to do that this time. All right, Innervate Shade is going to come out. And if this Shade lives for two turns, then Booster is going to have Lethal on, on board. Uh, not quite as early as next turn, because the Shade will only go to three, so it'll be 19 damage. Yeah. This Blade Flurry might come down at some point to yeah. stop the Shade. Especially if they pick up something like an Assassin's Blade here. Captain Greenskin! <laughs> wow. Really heavy weapon focus, Rogue. They can Captain Greenskin slam some damage into the face and still have that weapon for next turn. Yeah. It's also a pretty big body. Exactly. It's one of the biggest reasons to develop Captain Greenskin here is that you have a whole handful of spells and there's a stealth shade. So yeah. not an easy way to kill a stealth shade. You don't yeah. really want to start slinging spells at the face yet. It makes more sense to develop minions. Battlecry deals six damage. Pretty good Battlecry. That is a lot of damage on the Druid side as well. Yeah. Double swipe can threaten lethal. They can, yeah, they can actually double swipe here, clear the board, and cash in on the shade now. Yeah. Um, and just set up a lethal next turn. Yeah, like this. One swipe on green skin, one swipe in face, and maybe even just attack here with the shade, since yeah. if you get blade flurry, you don't have lethal, but just attacking at 12. I really don't like holding with the shade. I don't think there's any reason to hold with the shade. Yeah, even against... Uh, hmm, maybe one reason is Farseer. If you attack down to 12, you get Farseer, it's still at 15, but... You know, I think it makes more to, chance. Yeah, they still have to find a way to deal with it. And no healing drawn from Purdue. They have to dig. They do have Shiv plus Fan and Ives to dig for a healing. We do know there's Healbot plus double Farseer in the deck of Purdue. So two opportunities to draw three cards of their deck, which is probably thinned down to less than 15, is... Mm. If Rogue... Yeah, if Rogue can actually pull out some healing, this game is actually very close because... They have so much removal in the in just the six attack dagger Ooh, that's that not blade flurry can just wreck the ancient of lore plus. Oh, that. they didn't pick it up. No. And with that, Purdue is going to be very sad and realize that they are probably dead. Yeah. And they would be correct. It looks like they're going to uh, think about cashing in on this weapon now because they need to start pressuring lethal, being under 15, 14 health. You know it's just a matter of time before the Druid draws into combo. Especially with playing two quality oracles, you have to assume they drew Druid into the combo. So. Yeah. And that's going to be it. Wooster is going to go up to a 2 to z <laughs> Probably don't want to play Savage Wars before Force Nature. Yeah. I was, gonna, I was about to say, maybe <laughs> not, as they almost did a little bit of a, a misclick and was just going to go up to a 2-0 lead. Just one win away from moving up to 3-0 and taking their victory for the week.